Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Karen Cray, and I am the Assistant Director for University Relations here at SIT, and I will be facilitating the webinar. I am pleased to be joined by Dr. Jack Grant and Tony Cummings, Academic Directors of the Indonesia Community Nature Conservation in Bali program. We will keep this presentation to a half an hour, beginning with a very brief introduction of SIT, followed by a presentation of the program by Jack and Tony, and finishing up with your questions and discussion. For those of you unfamiliar with SIT, this year we are celebrating 50 years, also known as the School for International Training. SIT is the accredited institution of world learning. There are four distinct organizations in the world learning family. The Experiment in International Living runs summer study abroad programs for high school students. SIT Study Abroad, which sends more than 2,000 students from several hundred colleges and universities to 60 different semester and summer programs in 30 countries. The SIT Graduate Institute, which offers master's degrees, graduate level certificates, and professional programs at its Vermont and Washington, D.C. campuses and other locations around the world, and a Washington, D.C.-based NGO involved in incoming student exchange programs and large international development projects. We trace the institution and the SIT Study Abroad program back to the first experiment program in 1932. And since then, SIT continues to encourage students to step beyond the boundaries of a traditional classroom to analyze the critical issues shaping local communities around the globe. Our programs emphasize field-based research and foster experiential learning, intensive cultural immersion, and substantial community engagement. This new summer program in Indonesia, Community Nature Conservation in Bali, uses the best elements of this approach by blending classroom instruction and field study, by fostering student learning through multiple formats, including lectures, field visits, and interactions with local communities, and by providing structured and unstructured learning experiences. Leading the program will be long-term veterans of SIT study abroad. Dr. Jack Grant has been teaching in various study abroad programs for the past 21 years, including SIT, where he also served for five years as academic director of our Australia Natural Cultural Ecology Program. Jack is a zoologist specializing in ornithology and wildlife ecology of tropical forests. He was a long-serving president of the Tree Kangaroo and Manimal Group, a community conservation organization on Australia's African tablelands. Jack also works on a part-time basis as a team leader in environmental restoration with Conservation Volunteers Australia, a grassroots environmental action program that supports local environment and heritage conservation projects across Australia. Tony Cummings has also served as academic director for the Australia Natural and Cultural Ecology Program since 2002. Tony has a BS in Environmental Studies and Biology from St. Lawrence University and a Master's of Environmental Science from the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. His main research interest involves rainforest succession, especially reforestation planting. Like Jack, he is also involved in conservation communities including the Society for Conservation Biology, Trees for the Tablelands, and the Tree Kangaroo and Mammal Group. Before I hand over the presentation to you, Jack, I want to highlight the courses offered for this program. The first is a three-credit course on biodiversity and natural resource conservation in Bali. The second is also a three-credit course, the Biodiversity and Conservation Study Project, which includes two field study projects on Bali and one on the island of Nusa Penida. Uh, and the final of the three courses is Bahasa Indonesia, a two-credit language course with instruction offered at the beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels. Jack, Tony, welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm just going to um, step through the schedule of the program and uh, tell you a little bit about the different components. So we're, start, we're going to start off this program in... Um, flying into the capital of Bali, which is Denpasar. Um, so, uh, yeah, flying into Denpasar, there we are. Uh, we're going to go for our orientation period for about a week to Karambatan. 
And during that time, we'll be starting off, you know, setting the scene for the, the program by talking about the um, the context historically and geographically and culturally in Bali. So, you know, Bali is renowned for its its culture, especially its very vibrant culture and religion. And uh, the next slide, I think, should show you that. But uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of current challenges because it's also a very densely populated part of one of the most densely populated regions of the world. And it's, uh, you know, in terms of its biodiversity background, it's also one of the world's mega diverse countries. In other words, it's got, you know, significant percentage of the world's biodiversity, both marine biodiversity and terrestrial biodiversity. So. You know, there's, there's a, an obvious conflict set up there, not just with growing population in Indonesia, but also with growing demands for resources from the developed world. So um, we'll be looking at some of those conflicts and how best to address conservation in that context. So uh, we'll have some lectures when we're in Karambitan. We'll also have uh, intensive language instruction. So Bahasa Indonesia is the language that students will be learning on this program. And we'll also be, you know, helping, hopefully getting students familiar with the, the new cultural environment by doing some excursions. So from there we go to Badulu, where the, um, the semester program in Bali has its headquarters. And we'll be continuing some more intensive language instruction at the same time as as doing a short homestay. So there'll be a three-night homestay. During that period, there'll be more lectures in addition to language. And we'll also be uh, starting the first group's field project for the semester, or for the, the program. So we're, we're looking here at a picture of a temple in Badulu. And you can see there's a lot of vegetation associated with these temples, especially a lot of big fig trees, which are revered as a holy tree in Indonesia. And in the background to this picture, you can also see a lot of other vegetation because there's a green belt associated with each urban area in, in Indonesia. Uh, so one of the things we'll be focusing on for the field project is looking at the layout of the green belts and assessing them from the point of view of ecological connectivity. So a lot of the green belts are along river corridors, and we'll be trying to figure out whether the, the layout is is promoting biodiversity by connecting the landscape and looking especially at the role of those figs in the temples, which are very important food trees for a lot of the, the frugivorous species in the forest, which are key seed dispersers in the landscape. Uh, so from there, we'll be taking our first extended excursion. And that excursion takes us mainly to the west of Bali and for a few days into the east of Java. So Bali Barat National Park is the only national park in Bali. Manjangan Island, which is within that national park, is renowned for uh, snorkeling and coral reefs there are pretty spectacular. We'll be crossing the strait to East Java to go to Balaran National Park for a few days. And then we'll be looking at some sites in the central highlands of Bali around the Dougal, where we'll see some tropical montane rainforest. So that's a, about a two-week excursion. And um, this is what Bali Barat National Park looks like in large part. A lot of monsoon forests. So it's, it's at the dry end of the spectrum of, as far as rainforests go. And uh, it's got a lot of interesting biodiversity, including some species that are endemic to Java and Bali. And it's... Um, it's also a place that's got an interesting you know, conservation angle to it in that it, it does have the only, it is the only national park in Bali. It's managed by the National Parks and Wildlife Service there, but it's quite expensive to get in there as a tourist. And in terms of community access, things have been a little compromised because the usual buffer zones that apply to national parks in Bali, in this case, seem to have been taken up by resorts. And tourism is a very important part of what's happening in Bali economically. And the environmental sector is becoming a much bigger part of that. But in this case, there's a bit of a conflict between tourism and access by the local community. 
in most national parks and valley, the, the community can access the buffer zones to collect traditional resources like firewood, wild honey, and so on. So in this case, there's much more limited ability to do that. So there's an interesting conflict to explore there. Um, there is a, a lot of interesting wildlife in Bali Barad, a lot of bird species. Uh, but when we go across to Ballaran National Park in East Java, we find a much bigger representation of megafauna, large animals. There's also a much higher habitat diversity. So here's a picture of Ballaran. You can see some of the savanna in the foreground, very open, almost African-like savanna. There's a lot of monsoon forest. And on the slopes of the volcano behind, you can see some wetter evergreen rainforest. There are also mangroves in Valoran National Park. So a couple of the themes we'll be exploring there are management of high diversity habitats, uh, or high habitat diversity, and also management of megafauna. So the megafauna in Valoran includes bantang, which are the wild cattle, which are now pretty rare. And as you can see in this picture, there are also many deer, the Indonesian deer, very common, two species of monkeys. And in the background, you can see some green peafowl, which are one of the large-bodied bird species. So these are, um, you know, there's quite a high concentration of a lot of these species in Ballarat. So the, uh, the management of this park is quite different than Bali Barat. The black monkey, which is very rare, is also a feature of, of Ballarat National Park. So from... Um, in one bow around, we'll also see hornbills, some of the larger bodied frugivorous birds. So again, very important in the landscape. And you know, large animals in particular present challenges with conservation because generally speaking, you need large areas to support viable populations. So that's one of the, the angles we'll be looking at there. In Ballaran, there is also access uh, for the community to buffer zones. So we'll be able to look at some of the, the effects of that. So from there, we'll go back to Bali. On the, uh, the northern coast of Bali Barat National Park, we'll be looking in more detail at the marine environment. So here's where we take boats to go to Manjangan Island. And uh, the snorkeling around Manjangan Island is known worldwide. It's very diverse coral communities. And Indonesia, in general, has got some of the most diverse coral communities on the planet. And lots of different fish species. So we'll be looking in our a marine projects there, field projects at um, abundance and diversity of fish and coral species and some of the methods that we can use to monitor them for conservation purposes. So we'll be spending a bit of time in the water. And the other thing we'll look at when we're in that area is a pretty unique community-based project in a nearby tourist center where a lot of the local tourist facilities have combined to support a, a project to restore coral reefs. You know, in the past, there's been a lot of pressure on coral reefs in this area from unsustainable practices like dynamite fishing. So a lot of the reefs have disappeared. What they've done in this community is put steel structures back into the sea, uh, attached to low voltage electricity sources. And the low voltage electricity has the effect of facilitating coral colonization of these structures at about four times the natural rate. So you've now got about 80 artificial reefs created just offshore so that you know, tourists who can't dive and don't want to go further away can just snorkel straight off the beach in front of the resorts and, and see some coral. So we've been looking at that. It's the biggest project of its kind in the world, and it is community-based. From there, the final part of the excursion then will be in the central highlands of Bali, where we're looking at tropical montane forests. So this is rainforest. A lot of species that are endemic to the, the region are found in these high elevation forests. There's some good hiking opportunities there and a chance to learn a bit more about how biodiversity works in these high elevation areas. So that will wrap up the, the first major excursion. And from there, we go pretty much straight away into another two week period where we're going to Nusa Penida Island just to the south of Bali. And on Nusa Penida, it's, we're stepping back in time a little bit because this island is pretty much what Bali was like about 50 years ago. You know, tourism presence is almost nil. This is a beach on Nusa Penida. You can see the mainland of Bali in the background, so it's not very far away, but it's like a different world. So 
in the lagoon here, there are a lot of seaweed farms, which is one of the main sources of income for many people on the island. Um, so life is pretty slow here. It's, it's a well-known island in Bali because it's got a famous temple on it, so it's culturally a very important site. But the importance for us also is that it's the site of the reintroduction of a critically endangered species, and it's the only species endemic to Bali, and that's the Bali starling or Bali minor. So this species has been under pressure ever since it was first discovered in the early 1900s from uh, breeders and, and trappers because it's you know, been very desirable in captivity. So it's virtually extinct in the wild up until a few years ago. So the idea of reintroducing it on Musa Panita is to release birds in an area where they'll be safe from trapping pressure. You know, previous efforts on the mainland have met with very limited success because these birds are still worth a lot of money, about $3,000 each on the black market. On Nusa Panita though, the approach of the, the organization that's running this program, friends, for the, friends of the National Park Foundation, is to work very closely with the local community and they've been able to set up a situation where all the villages on the island are looking out for these birds and are interested in their protection. And the reason they've been able to accomplish that is because they're providing a lot of things in return for these villages. So there are scholarships for the kids to go to school, there are English lessons for the kids from volunteers at the center, there are trees provided for reforestation on the properties, you know, including species used for fodder for cattle and other utilitarian plantings. So the community is actually getting something out of this, and at this stage, there's something like 150 of these birds in the wild at this stage, which is a lot more than there were a few years ago. So you know, the project's been very successful to date, and largely because of that community base. So what we'll be doing there as a group is staying at the, the headquarters of the FNPF and doing a lot of their volunteer um, services that the, the volunteers normally do. We'll be the only group staying there at the time, so we'll have the run of the place and we'll be able to have the staff do various work with us. And we'll also be doing some of the things that the, the FNPF would, would like us to participate in specifically, like monitoring of the barley starlings and other local bird life, building up some biological inventory of the island by monitoring insects as well, perhaps looking at some reforestation technology and how we can improve that. And also, we will be participating in things like teaching English to the, the local kids in the community. So I think this will be a highlight for students on the program. It's a beautiful place to stay for a couple of weeks and uh, lots of stuff to do and contributing significantly to this successful conservation program. So um, after Nusa Panita, we'll be um, heading back to the mainland for the last few days of the program and we'll be wrapping up with you know, paperwork, assignments, final assignments, and a chance for students to just you know, explore a little bit of the Badulu and Ubud area before heading home. So that's pretty much the schedule of the program. Great. Thanks, Jack. Tony, is there anything you want to add to, um, at this time? No, Karen, but I, uh, I do think that it's a, uh, it, is, it is a really good example of uh, the aspects of uh, SIT, which you brought out in trying to get students involved in uh, the combining the understanding of the environmental, eco ecological, social, and economic uh, understandings of particular places and trying to put each of those in a in a context. It is definitely going to be rooted into a um, uh, an interdisciplinary program and also just rooted into the community as well, which is a, a hallmark of all of our programs. Excellent. I'm getting a few questions here, so let's just roll into the questions. Um, and and the attendees are are very welcome to submit their questions at any time. Uh, the first part is, is kind of about logistics. How will students travel from Badulu to Bharat National Park? Uh, most of the travel uh, on the mainland of Bali will be done in small mini buses. So we'll be, depending on group size, we'll have a, a couple of small mini buses or one larger bus. 
and um, yeah, so it's all overland travel. And then from from the west of Bali, there's there are ferry services very regularly to East Java, and then it's another short drive in the bus to uh, Ballaran National Park from there. And you'll be using a lot of the same uh, service providers as the semester program, I imagine. Yeah, that's right. So they, you know, they got very well established links with um, with people who have minibus services, and in general, you know, that that program has got a lot of really useful contacts that we'll be able to take advantage of. So logistically, things will be a lot more smooth, hopefully, than setting up new programs in a lot of other contexts. Uh, we also have a question about the language. Uh, if a student has uh, already studied Indonesian, where, will there be an opportunity for them to be in a more advanced class? And uh, given the, there, I think it's a three credit course, will that be enough um, exposure for a student to head, to move from, um, you know, if they started in a beginning level, could they move to the next course that's offered on our home campus? Um, well, for the first part of that, yeah, there, there are opportunities to do more advanced levels of language. So each student will be assessed um, when they first arrive. So anyone who has some previous experience in Bahasa Indonesia will be able to get one-on-one -on -one instruction in more advanced levels. Um, for the second part, um, I, you know, I think that the amount of language instruction is going to be fairly limited. Uh, you know, we've got a pretty busy schedule, so it's really just um, you know, a very basic level. So for anyone who's starting off with Bahasa Indonesia, it probably won't be enough to go on from there to more advanced course. Mm -hmm. But I would, uh, I would envision, Karen, that someone coming with a background would really be able to take that uh, and to build on it in terms of uh, everyday interactions with uh, people in the local communities because we are going to be um, you know quite involved um, with the with the Indonesian program staff from the um, from the existing Bali program but also at the places where we're staying uh, uh, especially uh, Nusa Panita so there's quite a um, I think they've got about 10 full 10 staff at the uh, FNPF headquarters uh, and so there would be quite a bit of room for uh, meaningful interactions uh, with those staff and also with people in the local community. Yeah. So uh, I would think that that would be uh, a good springboard for someone who has a, a bit of background in Indonesian to um, really get some on the ground experience that would uh, you know, obviously help them if they wanted to pursue that further. Very good. Um, another question about the homestay experience. Um, can you give some um, idea of what a student might experience in a homestay? Are there any particular um, things that a student coming from the U.S. might be surprised about in terms of the Balinese cultural context in homestays? Um, possibly. <laughs> Uh, the homestay is is pretty short, but um, it uh, it's in the Badulu area, and you know students will be you know spending you know probably most of their days in class there, but spending evenings in the homestay. So I think they'll they'll just get a a little bit of insight into the the basic way of life. I mean, it, you know these these are the same homestay families that are used by the semester program, so they're very used to having students, and I'm sure they'll. And they'll try to give them the best possible experience. In terms of culture, I think you know, it'll, most of the exposure to what's different about Balinese culture will happen through the course of the program. The homestays will be you know, a chance for students to try out the language a bit and also to, to experience family life a little bit more. So I think the, you know, the basic schedule of family life will be a little bit different. It's pretty slow paced in Bali, but it's very you know, it's emphasized in terms of um, everyday interactions, family life as opposed to work is pretty important, so that might be one of the interesting differences for people. 
Another aspect of homestay, just very basic things. Uh, you get a much different experience going to a market with uh, someone that you've developed a relationship with who's a local person, as say opposed to going uh, to that same market uh, without any contact. You, you get a much more, in, uh, uh, I guess, complex insight into the interactions that's go that are going on between people when you uh, approach those sorts of everyday situations uh, by having a contact person in the culture. So the students have an independent field study project for this program as well. Do you have some idea of what projects the students might undertake? Um, well, it will be a um, you know a scaled down version of the independent study projects from a full semester, but uh, most of these will be focused on the, the Nusa Panita part of the, pro the program. So students will have a choice there from you know, the different activities we're doing during that period in terms of writing up an assignment on you know, um, some of the community-based conservation activities so they can you know, approach things from a social sciences angle there. Or they can look at reforestation technology and do a review of what's happened at FNPF and you know suggestions for future developments there or they can look at you know some of the biological monitoring aspects so there's a, there's a whole range of things to choose from there and they'll be what students are writing up for that final paper which will be a little more in depth than the first two field projects which will be done as groups. Um, the last question is relating to free time. Um, do you have uh, much sense, you know these are college students and they like to explore uh, the community, the nightlife, um, on their own, do you have a sense of how much of opportunity they will have for that? Um, well, the way I sort of envision the program playing out is we'll be keeping students pretty busy in the mornings and then you know trying to adopt a more Balinese schedule in the sense of having a bit of downtime in the afternoons, you know, uh, siesta time, so to speak. So there'll be a fair bit of free time in, in the afternoon. So um, that'll be a, an opportunity for, for students to interact with locals and get out and explore a bit. Um, in terms of nightlife, I think, uh, you know, there'll be some opportunities to, to get out and about during that homestay period because we're close to Ubud. And also um, right at the end of the program, nightlife, during the rest of the program, we'll be on excursion and mainly, you know, in the natural environment a bit more. So nightlife is more like, uh, you know, looking for nocturnal animals than <laughs> anything else, I'd say. But um, yeah, a bit of time to, to take in things, you know, on a, at a personal level through mm -hmm. the program. So for the advisors, the chance to remind the, the students that this is at a core, uh, a hard science program. Um, animal behavior, animal identification will certainly be a part of this. Yeah, that's true, Karen, but um, I think the um, there is scope for uh, you know, wider interest in terms of the, you know, the social aspects of the program in relation to you know how ecology and conservation and um, economic development can uh, you know can be linked with these communities. So um, it's it, you know that that's really what we're trying to stress, not just the uh, you know animal and plant identification and and studying biodiversity from a scientific aspect. We're interested in that, but how it applies to um, people on, um, living in these places that uh, have to interact with these environments on a daily basis. Wonderful. With that, we are at our 30 minutes. Um, if you have anything else you'd like to add before we conclude. Um, but I will encourage our attendees to, to check out the website, um, contact me, I will send you my contact information uh, if you have any additional questions about the program. Um, the application cycle is open now and we will close it by April 15th. Um, with that, I have nothing else to add. Jack, Tony? I just want to say thanks to everyone for attending and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Bali. Yep, I second that. Wonderful. 
Thank you so much for everyone who's joined.